Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Hell froze over Paul Ryan bent the knee, look what he finally sacrificed. House Speaker Paul Ryan condemned Antifa terrorists after being shamed, shamed, shamed into admitting that there is a violent left-wing presence in the United States. Speaker Ryan received criticism from alternative media outlets across the board, Breitbart and the Gateway Pundit. Paul Ryan refused to condemn their violence. Social media was set ablaze after Paul Ryan attacked Trump for condemning both sides of the violence in Charlottesville. Trump supporters hammered Paul Ryan for refusing to condemn Antifa. It turns out that attacking Trump supporters. Speaker Ryan believes, as is obvious, these individuals are left-wing thugs, and those who are committing violence need to be arrested and prosecuted. Antifa is a scourge on our country, Ryan's spokeswoman Ashley Strong said in a statement provided exclusively to the Daily Caller. Here is a series of pictures of left-wing violence. It took Paul Ryan longer than Nancy Pelosi to condemn the violence of Antifa. This is way too long. The mainstream media bitches and whines about Donald Trump and Charlottesville. Why don't they attack Paul Ryan for not condemning Antifa violence? Share this all over America to embarrass Paul Ryan. Is this guy on Trump's side or not? He needs to get in line and stand with our Republican brothers and sisters against this democratic violence. Yikes Harvey just shut down gas supply to these states is one of them yours. The devastation from Hurricane Harvey has been tragic for sure. It continues in Houston and surrounding areas, so we should continue to pray for those people. But the problems from Harvey are not contained just to Texas. There's flash flood warnings in Tennessee for the next two days. And now, a major pipeline is shutting down. This will happen today. The Colonial Pipeline supplies over 100 million gallons of heating oil gasoline and aviation fuel to the East Coast every single day. And it's about to be completely closed. What's worse is that two East Coast refineries have already run out of gas. What does that mean to you? You better go fill up. Reuters reported. I've never seen a situation this bad, said one East Coast market source. And. Imports can't make up for this, this is going to be the worst thing the U.S. has seen in decades from an energy standpoint. Not wanting to start something crazy, but you know what's about to happen, gas prices will climb, and that's if you can find gas. I expect to see those signs as I pull up to the pump, the ones that say out of gas. Which is never good if you're trying to get to work, or get you kids to school. Been there, done that. It's good to be prepared, so I recommend filling up now. But please don't be greedy, y'all. Leave some gas for the next person. We are all Americans and we are all in this together. H. T. The Hill Double Trouble Mueller just teamed up with Top Dem to do the unthinkable to Trump. There has been all kinds of talk since day one about President Donald Trump pardoning himself or one of his supporters to sabotage the Russia investigation. Despite there being zero evidence that he would do that. Despite there being zero evidence that he would do that, Special Investigator Robert Mueller just found a surefire way to rip the presidential pardon away from Trump. Mueller is teaming up with the New York Attorney General to make Trump unable to use his presidential pardons. The reason this will work is because Trump, a New Yorker, could possibly be charged with a state-level crime by Attorney General Eric Schneiderman. Since presidential pardons only apply to federal crimes, he would be unable to use them. Mueller and Schneiderman have already been sharing evidence and information with one another while running two parallel investigations into the president. If this seems like a shady tactic, it absolutely is. Still, it's important to remember that none of these little tricks of legality will amount to anything unless they can find real indisputable evidence that Donald Trump rigged the 2016 elections with Russia. What this does do, however, is give Jeff Session or Rod Rosenstein another reason to fire Bob Mueller for his clearly fishy tactics involving many top-level Dems including A.G. Schneiderman and seven other big Democrat donors he hired on to be lawyers for the investigation. Is it time for Robert Mueller to be replaced as special investigator into Russia? Right after Chris Christie's dirty betrayal, Arpaio slammed him with one brutal question. 
New Jersey Governor Chris Christie went on MSNBC Wednesday and talked about President Trump's pardon of former Sheriff Joe Arpaio. What Christie had to say was not nice, slamming the president for his pardon and Arpaio himself for the accusations of racial profiling that originally led him to be arrested. My understanding has always been that one of the prerequisites you look for in giving a pardon is contrition for what you were convicted of. I didn't see that in Sheriff Arpaio. Christie went on to say he would not have pardoned Arpaio if he were president. This is not one that I would have done. Although Christie later added that President Trump had the absolute right to pardon. Arpaio did not take this sitting down, going on an interview with a radio station to blast Christie's comments. I think he was a U.S. attorney, he should know the laws. You don't have to say you're guilty for a pardon, and I am not guilty, and the president understood that. He added, why doesn't he study the laws? Whoop, there it is folks. Chris Christie, you were okay in your day, but you're lame duck governor and you just have to step aside and let the Republicans in power do their work if all you're going to do is criticize. The last thing the president needs right now are formal allies turning against him. Share this out if you agree. H.T. The Hill Right after siding with Trump Dems did something sickening to Senator Feinstein. It was pretty shocking to everyone when Senator Dianne Feinstein of California decided to come out and defend President Trump in an interview yesterday. Senator Feinstein figured it was going to be no big deal when she told the audience she thinks Trump may end up being a good president so wrong. That's when the Dems and the crowd turned on her and did the unthinkable. The ultra-liberal audience booed Senator Feinstein for sticking up for President Trump. They are acting just like conditioned dogs now. When they hear anything good about Trump, they instinctively react with outrage. It's hard to tell if they even think it all anymore or if it's pure rage and training. The thing is, all she said was simply, Look, this man is going to be president most likely for the rest of this term. I just hope he has the ability to learn and change, and if he does, he can be a good president. Even with the audience resisting their own ally and senator, Feinstein showed impressive resolve when she did not back down from her defense of Trump going on to say that if he acts less selfishly he may turn out to be good for everyone. That's her opinion, but at least she is being open to our president. I don't know about the rest of y'all, but I say this is one for the win category. Help share this everywhere and show the world that Trump really is turning people on the left. The FBI will expose Hillary's dirtiest files if everyone does one simple thing now. Ty Clevenger, a New York lawyer, filed a Freedom of Information Act request concerning Hillary Clinton's email investigation in March 2016. Last week he heard back from the FBI regarding the request and guess what? His request was denied. Why was it denied? According to the FBI, not enough public interest was shown to justify completing the request. The FBI says that it will only release records from files of former investigations if the subject directly consents, is deceased, or if there is strong public interest in the case. FBI Records Management Section Chief David M. Hardy bolstered the last claim, telling Clevenger in an email that, You have not sufficiently demonstrated that the public's interest in disclosure outweighs personal privacy interests of the subject. And also, it is incumbent upon the requester to provide documentation regarding the public's interest in the operations and activities of the government before records can be processed pursuant to the FOIA. Now, considering that the Clinton email investigation was a major scandal during the 2016 election that captivated a good part of the electorate, I'd say that seems like public interest to me. Clevenger was specifically looking for documents that were filed after referral to the Department of Justice from former House Oversight Chairman Jason Chaffetz, who asked the DOJ to investigate and determine whether Secretary Clinton or her employees and contractors violated statutes that prohibit destruction of records, obstruction of congressional inquiries, and concealment or cover-up of evidence material to a congressional investigation. Clinton was found to have used a secret, non-government, server during her time as Secretary of State. The FBI determined that she did not deserve charges because she allegedly did not know the dangers of having a secret serve, even though such that put national security at risk. Clevenger said of the ruling to the Washington Times. I'm just stunned. This is exactly what I would have expected had Mrs. Clinton won the election, but she didn't. It looks like the Obama administration is still running the FBI. How can a story receive national news coverage and not be a matter of public interest? If this is the new standard, then there's no such thing as a public interest exception. A petition has already been started to refute Hardy's claims and prove that there is interest in the Clinton email scandal sign in here.
something is seriously up with this FBI investigation if they think there's no public interest. Sounds like a lame excuse. Luckily we have people like Ty Clevenger willing to get to the bottom of it one and for all. Get on that petition and sign away, patriots. H.T. Washington Times, Fox News.